Hello and welcome. I am going to be talking about all things knitting today. So I hope you're here to hear about knitting. Um, this is pretty much the last three months worth of knitting, I would say. Um, so the summer. So all the knitting for the summer. I'm going to start with the most recent project because if you hear that noise, those are the quail. They're talking to each other. They're on opposite sides of the garden and um, they're not in the same pen because uh, they both want to be the alpha. So now they're just chirping at each other from across the garden. Right, so this first project is in a lovely light blue color. It's um, Drops Nepal. Um, it is 65 wool and 35 alpaca. So uh, some nice winter, um, autumn winter uh, materials, I suppose. Um, it's a nice thick one for five millimeter needles. I would say it's uh, maybe an iron weight, I don't know. So I chose this light blue color because I was going through my wardrobe and every time I said to myself, right, what do I want to wear? And the, the, the answer was, I wish I had a light blue cardigan. So that's what I cast on. I'm doing the Kudzu cardigan. I'll put a little picture in there so you can see it. Is a free pattern, which it's quite amazing because it's quite a detailed pattern and must have taken ages to put together. Um, so it's a lovely pattern. It's knitting up really quickly because five mil needles. Uh, it's got this lovely lace. If you can kind of uh, can kind of see it. Dead easy. Um, if you put stitch markers, every I think it's every however many stitches is one repeat. So I learned that trick and I thought that's what I'm doing from now on because if I didn't do that I would have had so many mistakes and had to rip back like three times, four times. Um, but because you put markers on each repeat, you quickly pick up. If you're not ending the repeat correctly, then you go back and just pull out those whatever, 10, 13 stitches. Um, so you never have to rip back and that's what I'm going to do from now on. So this is a Kudzu card again. You can see I'm on one sleeve here. Um, it's going to fit uh, nicely there. Um, I think it's quite a wide neckline, which I was looking for, so that's good. Um, I'm not sure what to do about the button band, if I'm going to follow pattern. So pick up along and knit outwards, that way. Quite a long stretch, so it's the first cardigan I'm, I'm knitting. So I'm kind of um, not looking forward to picking up all along the, the button band, but it's what you have to do for a cardigan, right? <laughs> So uh, I think this is why I've avoided cardigans uh, to date is because I don't fancy the button band. It's like you think you're done and then you've got this mass load of stitches to pick up. And I was thinking of doing a um, vertical, yeah, I suppose vertical button band where you cast on like, I don't know, 10 stitches and knit up. <sighs> but it's not in the pattern and I don't want to make that up now. So I know Petite that has one of the, her cardigans that's where I saw it and I thought oh that looks really nice and it would be intimidating because it would feel like you're knitting really quickly <laughs> so maybe I'll do that mm, but I don't feel like um, I just want to get this thing done because I've been knitting on it this all uh, summer and uh, I kind of want to have it ready to wear now in autumn anyways uh, I felted a little stitch marker this little guy <laughs> He's so cute. I um, I really love him. I would like to make some more. So I bought a felting kit day before yesterday and um, just put him together. I had no cute stitch markers. Um, so I don't know what he is. He's like a... He was meant to be a cupcake, but he's like a mushroom little thing. I don't know. That's him. And then I've still got another sleeve to do. So I've put that on a scrap piece of yarn, which is... Uh, the next best thing if you don't have anything to hold it on with, like these cords. Uh, you'll see the bottom is on a cord. So I've got two, two, two balls left for each arm. So that should be enough. And then this for the bottom. So plenty of yarn, um, but I didn't quite want to cast off yet. So that's the Kudzu cardigan. 
I am very happy with the uh, lace. I feel very accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows lace looks more complicated than it is. Next thing, fresh off the needles is my mismatched socks. I ran out of yarn. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, bust some stash. So I pulled out what I thought was a sock yarn um, in this hazel color. So it's a hazel colorway. It's the snuggly, what's it, Sidar, Sidar uh, colorway hazel. And um, it knits up really nicely. I, I really like the tight gauge as well. Um, and I thought, hmm, this is really great. Is this why people love socks so much? Also, a first for me. Uh, I did the heel flap and gusset method. Um, I just watched Crazy Sock Lady. Thank you for your tutorials. They were very clear and um, very well explained. So I just followed her um, videos on YouTube and they were great. Um, I did find for me it was slightly wide and I thought why is it so wide when this pattern's been tried and tested and then I looked at the label and it's a DK <laughs> so I've been knitting it with a DK yarn I was convinced it was a sock yarn four ply or something like that but it wasn't anyhow anywho so um, I could get away with 10 stitches less on the second sock so you can see the first sock is slightly wider and the second sock is 10 stitches less 64 54 or yeah and uh, that worked great this fits really well but i ran out of yarn so i subbed this one out with another ball in my stash um, which uh, i don't know it's nice this is a practice pair because i've never knit socks before ever so i thought let me just this is gonna mismatch it's not going to be the same but that's okay so now i've got a pair of socks this one fits me really well this one is too big but that's how you learn so this will be my round the house pair of mismatching socks which i love and you know what the dk weight actually worked out well because it's such a tight gauge they feel very sturdy and like they're gonna last so that's that one um right so just before that i cast off two things but i'll only talk about the one i'll do a year in review video and maybe at the end of the year and then include everything i knit but for today i'll include another lace pattern so this one is a gone studio pattern yes they're renowned for being very difficult to understand but this one was surprisingly easy uh, and if you can follow a chart this is great yeah it reminds me a bit of the ranunculus with the wide boat neckline oh you know what I mean, this neckline. Um, I did eye cord edging um, on everything and then I did a twisted rib on the bottom. So this was on three millimeter needles. You do bottom up, so you do this stretch first and thank goodness for that because I wouldn't have finished it by now. Um, it was a bit of, um, it was a bit tedious on three mil needles, I'm not gonna lie, but I finished this in four days if I'm not mistaken, four days. I was determined to get this done because uh, I wanted to wear it during summer. And here in the UK, which is where I am, the summer doesn't last that long. So while it's here, got to wear your summer stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's this one. And it fits really well. It's a lace pattern um, and it's a free pattern. And the yarn I used was Drops Saffron, which is 100% cotton, really nice, but hard on the hands. But that is why I always have. I'll do a what's in my notions bag video as well because um, it's nice to keep a record of that. I always keep like intense hand cream in my in my notions bag. It's just a standard, and then I use a hairband because sometimes I need a hairband too uh, to keep my darning needle. On. So this is always in my notions bag and it's easy to find my darning needle because it's attached to my hand cream and I never lose it. I, you saw I just stuck it in a label, an old label and, uh, and that's how I keep it in there and it's really handy. So um, that's this one. It's really it's really nice to wear, maybe hand wash it with all my other stuff but <clears throat> I think you can just chuck it in the wash and it'll be fine. So that's this one. I've always been a fan of the smaller gauge but it was fun to alternate between the three mil and the five mil. So I think that's what I'll do from now on. If I have a three mil project on the go, 
Uh, and even though I finished this in three days, I only did that because I took breaks and, and did like a row or two of, of the five mole project. So that's that. Now I have a whip, which I keep in a <laughs> uh, travel bag. So I went to the hobby shop the other day, which is kind of like Michael, and I got their, um, I, I went to their um, sale bins. They had this lovely color. And I said to myself going, I'm not buying anything with acrylic. I'm only do doing um, plant-based fibers, you know, linen or a cotton or something like that I was looking for to do a camisole. Uh, or if it had a, a deal on some mohair, I would get some mohair. Um, something natural. Well, I don't know. Natural fibers. And then I saw this color and I thought, uh, and it was on sale. I thought, uh, I need to get it. <laughs> so it is acrylic mixed with um, polyamide, which is like, yeah, no, not it's not the natural uh, route I was going for, but that's okay, you know. And I, I did say I wasn't going to buy any more before I'd gone through a lot of my stash. I know I am not the only one, so I'm not going to feel bad. I'm talking to my people. Yeah, <laughs> so you are you are on the same page as me, I know. Okay, so we have a uh, camisole. Uh, a camisole which is working up nicely in broken rib. Um, and then it has a twisted rib at the bottom. Woo, that looks terrible. There's a better patch, more even knitting. Uh, yeah, I did, I did have to rip back this. Well, actually I didn't rip back. I just went down, fixed the stitches and came back up, went down, fixed the stitches. I did a whole like 18 stitches of the wrong pattern. I don't know how I did that. I never make mistakes. And if I do, I catch them quickly. So I don't know how I missed this. It was like 20, 20 rows in. And then I realized, oh, there's a whole row that looks, that is wrong. So I had to pull back. Mm -hmm. I made some more stitch markers using beads. Um, so they were quite cute, um, quite handy. So I'll make some more of these because they're quite fun. Uh, and then I just use the normal ones to keep track of where I am. Uh, progress keepers. So that I knitted the day before yesterday, that I did yesterday, and then today I'll do some more. Um, yeah, these are on four mole needles. Um, I always use my interchangeables um, uh, Knit Pro. I think in the US they're called um, Knitter's, Knitter's Pride or something like that. But uh, they Knit Pros here in the UK, and um, I, I don't know, I always knit with metal needles. They, I like the clink and I like the feel and I like the way everything slides. Having said that, I haven't tried um, decent bamboo or wooden needles yet. So maybe I, I bought a cheapo pair of bamboo needles and they were awful, but that's not because of the bamboo. It's because the cord was made of this weird sticky plastic sticking. Everything was sticking. Nothing was sliding across and I couldn't, it was slowing me down way too much. So yeah, threw those away. I kept one pair out of the set. It was a set of 10 or something. I kept one pair in case I could get it to work. But anyway, so yes, um, I bought three balls of these. Um, I'm on the second one. So this is, I've used one. This is the second one and I've got a third one. Um, and that should be enough for a camisole. I'm planning to just make it up as I go along. Um, I kind of like the style of my favorite things, knitwear camisoles, um, but not one of them is exactly what I was looking for. So I thought, okay. Okay, I will make it up as I go along. Um, and for the life of me, I don't know how many stitches I cast on. 100 maybe? 112? 110? I don't know. That's in my Ravel Ravelry. Um, Marilyn83 is my name. Uh, and Ravelry, so all my projects are there with loads of extensive project notes. Because why not? I'm pretty happy with it so far. I do think... I do another mistake row. Really? Oh, that's why I corrected it. I corrected it up to there and it didn't match. So there's going to be a bit of a blip there. I spent about four hours correcting that incorrect row on Monday. So I'm not pulling back anymore um, because you don't really notice it. So it's okay. 
Um, broken rib is quite cool. I did a row of garter here at the bottom before the twisted rib. It is actually reversible, kind of. And it makes like this um, seed stitchy kind of... Maybe it is seed stitch, I can't remember. See, that's the thing. I, I uh, will learn a stitch and then forget it the very next project. It's gone. Um, but it's okay. That's why there's YouTube to look up these things. And there's so many amazing tutorials. Um, I spend hours watching YouTube and I love it so much. Um, just being able to access all this amazing stuff for free, all these tutorials and stitch patterns and uh, methods of doing cast-ons and cast-offs and things like that. It's just amazing. I'm very grateful for all of the makers contributing positively to YouTube. And um, yeah, so those are all the things I'm busy on now. I've got the Kudzu cardigan um, and the um, minty camisole to finish. I'm planning to cast on uh, another ranunculus. I did a ranunculus in pink, but um, it was acrylics. And I thought, well, there's no harm in having more than one ranunculus because I've heard obviously so much about it. So I did one just to see what the pattern was like. Um, and it was great. I didn't like the acrylic, have to just knit another one. So I've got some drops Puma and drops Nord in my stash. And I might do a swatch of each and decide if I'm going to go with a Nord plus Kid Silk, you know, or just with uh, the alpaca, the Puma. Did I then? Aha, I did. So I've got a sweater's quantity worth of this, which is alpaca. It's the light gray, I'm pretty sure. Yarn group B, 50 grams, 110 meters, 100% alpaca. And it has a 21 stitch gauge. Um, color seven, I think it's the light gray. So I've got loads of, and I love this. I love, I love knitting with it, with the metal needles. And I love the, the outcome. I love the fabric. It's just so soft. Just do not throw it in the wash because that's what I did. On Thitty thinking, Thitty was going to be cool enough and it was the heat that made the felting, but it wasn't, it's the friction, it's the friction guys. Don't throw things in the wash because the friction is what causes the felting, not the temperature. So that wasn't expensive in terms of cost and time. Uh, lesson, expensive lesson. I threw my amazing colorwork sweater in the wash, 100% alpaca and it came out like a piece of cardboard. Yeah. So anyways, I'm still, can you see I'm not over it? <laughs> not quite over it yet. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, it was such a labor of love, that color work, and it was just all gone. Anyways, it took me two weeks to throw it away. It was lying on the kitchen table, and I just stared at it every day until finally I thought, why am I doing this to myself? And I took the piece of cardboard, little mini, mini jumper sweater, Mm, felted and threw it in the bin so i won't be doing that again anyways i hope you enjoyed it i hope you uh were inspired to maybe knit something i don't know uh that's why i watch all these um what's it called podcasts and uh, yarn knit and chats and all this kind of stuff because i love seeing what everybody's making and that's how i get my ideas uh it's just so wonderful to see what everyone's doing and how they're doing it and how they're modifying it. And I love that. I love seeing how everyone modifies their stuff. So um, yeah, I'll be doing another update on the cardigan once it's done. And hopefully that's not too far in the future. <laughs>